Hey guys, coming at you a little different this week. I'm trying a, a new method of recording and, and posting this, and we'll see see how it goes. Um, we're going to have our last day of Exponent Properties today, and we're going to be kind of putting it all together. I actually only put together four practice problems because uh, they're going to take a little more time. Um, again, I'm going to direct your focus to why things work how they work, not like memorizing what to do when it looks like this or what did I do when it looked like this. We're going to be kind of combining all of our, our properties together to simplify some expressions, all right? And um, what's kind of cool is I've been reading this book called Fermat's, no, yeah, Fermat's Enigma. And it's about this guy that there's a proof that went like 350 years without being solving. So a big math problem. 350 years, nobody could solve it. And this guy solved it. And he used a lot of math that I have no idea what it is, but I also saw in there him using some standard practices that we use in algebra. And the whole reason he could problem solve the whole thing is because of his approach of understanding. He had to learn new methods of math. Um, and this guy was at Cambridge, learned new methods of math he never knew, and then applied them in new ways. And that's the whole point of conceptual understanding is so you can use everything that we do in new ways when uh, you further your math uh, education and math career. So um, please don't... Uh, hesitate to reach out if you need something, and let's get at these practice problems. So, day four, exponent properties. We're going to put it all together. Um, and there's more than one way to go about these, all right? Um, I'm going to show you like what I think is the most efficient way, but some people like to do things in a little different order. Me personally, when I approach these, I really like to simplify whatever I have in the parentheses first. So, um, we could raise y to the 6th to the 4th and y squared to the 4th and then simplify. I pre prefer myself to simplify what's in the parentheses first. And, and we can do that with order of operations because parentheses first. So I have two factors of y in my denominator canceling two factors of y in my numerator. And really what that does is simplifies to give me y to the 4th to the 4th. And if I have that base factor y to the 4th four times, that gives me y to the 16th. So there, there's, we have, we have exponents, we have division, we have power to power. Uh, there's a lot going on there. Uh, you might notice, and this is maybe the only one I'll do this for, if I were to raise y to the 6th to the 4th and y squared to the 4th, I'd get y to the 24th over y to the 8th. Eight of these factors cancel eight of these factors to get me to that same y to the 16th. I just ended up dealing with bigger numbers here. I prefer to work with smaller numbers if it's an option, okay? So here's the next one you might notice again, a tad more going on, but we're gonna lean on the same basic fundamentals of what we've been doing with exponents. So I'm going to simplify everything in the parentheses first, and I'm gonna look at my x factors. So three of my factors of x cancel three of my factors of x and would leave me with three. One of my factors of y would cancel one of my factors and I and leave me with one. And in this case, I like to write the one because it's organizational. But you'll see when I rewrite my expression, I ditch it because anything to the first power is itself. So here's my new simplified expression. I cannot simplify anything else in the parentheses. So I'm going to raise everything. You know, it's everything's in the parentheses. Everything gets raised to that third power, okay? So that gives me, for a simplified expression, y cubed over x to the ninth. Uh, the most common wrong denominator there would be x to the sixth. But we have a base factor of x cubed three times. So that's x cubed, x cubed, x cubed for x to the ninth. Remember guys, feel free to pause, rewind, okay? Uh, watch it a second time. I know it's a tad quick, okay? Uh, here, you might even notice we have even more going on. Again, I like to simplify what's in the parentheses first. You don't have to. Uh, so 8 divided by 2 is 4. So I get a new coefficient there. And I have two factors of y that can cancel two factors of y to give me a y squared there. I'm going to rewrite my expression with what I've done so far. And look how much simpler and nice that's looking already. All right. That looks way more manageable. So remember, nothing is magically attached. This isn't one thing. That's actually three factors, four, y, y. So I have to raise everything to my exponent of two. So four squared is 16. Y squared squared is fourth. And z squared is z squared. And there's nothing left in this expression to simplify. 
Another thing to point out is to remember, our original expression's value is identical to our new expression's value. Just if we had to work with one over and over and over, that'd be so much nicer to work with, right? There's less going on, that's why it's called simplify. All right, last one, we're throwing in that negative exponent, let's get after it. So you might notice negative exponent just means reciprocal. It kind of doesn't matter when that happens. Some people like to do it first. I actually like to, to chunk these up in the littler steps myself. So I'm going to simplify in the parentheses first. And I have two factors of x that cancel two factor of x. And nothing else simplifies. So I've got 3x squared over 4y cubed to the negative 3. And if you were to watch someone else's YouTube video, you know, they might go after this a little different way. I'm just showing the way I do. You could, raise, you could raise everything on the inside of the negative third power to start like it works. This is what I choose to do next. I choose to do the reciprocal. So I'm going to flip my numerator and denominator. And then I'm going to raise it to all to a positive three. So this is just what I choose to do. I like to get that negative exponent to be positive. And now I can just cube everything. So that gives me 64y to the ninth over uh, 27x to the sixth. Uh, let's see here. Double checking some stuff. Factor of three, factor of nine, nothing to simplify in my coefficients. Yeah, that's as simple as I can go. Again, from here to here, some people do some stuff different. This is just what works for me. Uh, some people would like to raise everything in here to the third power first and then flip it after. Um, the important part is that our values are the same when we start and when we finish. So, um, is that it? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There it is, guys. I just want to say hello again. Thinking, thinking about y'all. Uh, missing y'all. Uh, looking for the next time I get to see any of you and... Uh, make sure you're using those office hours. Hit me up with emails. I'm going to lean on those office hours to handle most of that stuff. And uh, just know I'm just wishing the best for everybody. And uh, I just hope that you continue to do your best. And make sure if you're having trouble doing your best that you let me know. And so we can work on that. So miss y'all.